Good afternoon. <laughs> ah, man, it's been like this. I don't know if you can see the my breath, but it's been like this the whole week. In fact, it's been like this for the past two weeks. It is about 41 degrees right now, and it is in the afternoon time. So 41 degrees, that's, uh, put that into perspective, that's about, what is it, like 8, 9 degrees above freezing? So that, that being the case, I just wanted to kind of really show you kind of what the, how the tropicals are, are handling it, the, uh, the in-ground tropical fruit trees, that is. So, yeah, I mean, this was really just kind of a, a, a quick overview of, of what's happening with, with the tropical fruit trees uh, if you have it in the ground uh, unprotected. This is, we're, we're, to, we're going towards the middle of um, winter now. So we, we still have, you know, we're about halfway there. I've got another maybe a month and a half to go before uh, really the, the dread of falls is, is mostly gone. But you never know. I mean, I, you know, in previous years, you know, even in March, you know, I've, we've had a, a frosty week or two that, that, you know, hit us. So as you may know, the, the thing that's unique to the Central Valley is really wintertime. We, we get the Thule fog that, that hits us, which adds an extra element of cold. Luckily, what's, nice about our, our coal is the fact that we don't get a whole lot of wind which would mean there's really not a whole lot of chill factor that um you know that adds to the, the coal uh, that our trees have to go through i mean the the really the, th the thing with the winter is it, it's really not so much the coal in terms of the temperature uh, as it's the wind because what's going to happen is when it's cold and if it's windy, the winds are gonna just really come to and suck all the moisture from the the leaf, the foliage of the the tropical trees, and they they slowly die out. They slowly get frostbite almost. But if it's just the cold alone like this, like you know, like low forties, in fact, it's been like this for the past you know again two weeks or so. Uh, so I was uh, up in Shaver Lake just last weekend. It's actually warm over there than here during the daytime. That's that's crazy, but over there uh, it was about fifty three degrees when when we were there, and again right now at this time it's forty one degrees in my yard. So, Chair Moyes, I don't see any damage at all. I mean it it's handling it without any issues. Uh, even the mangoes are like they're, they're doing great. Manila, of course. Uh, Patango tuba. I mean, yeah, this guy really can take the heat without. I'm sorry, can take the cold without any issues. Uh, it is flowering, of course. The the thing with uh, tropical fruit trees, you've you've got to realize is the the native climate that they are in. Uh, this is a. a Japoticaba, but the native climate that these guys are in, there is no frost. So these trees will set flower, will grow, will produce fruits practically year round. But in our situation, in, in, in a cold climate though, you, you've got to really treat them like uh, they are deciduous trees. And, and uh, in many ways, you've got to make sure that they don't grow during the winter time just give them enough water to keep them alive not grow last thing you want to do is have them grow um, this is a containerized inga uh, ice cream uh, bean tree so let, let me show you this is why ideally you do not want the some of the, the more sensitive trees to grow. This is a, a really good example. See this right here? This is a, a Thai jambu wax jambu. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is what happens to the, the new foliage. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's gonna suffer badly because 
the foliage just has not hardened enough uh, compared to say the the older foliage which are fine but the new ones the new growth is what's really gonna set you back if the trees uh, grow during winter time now there are other trees that although tropical can handle the cold without any issues and in fact will actually need the cold to start blooming uh, white sapote is a really good example this guy can really handle the cold without any issues in fact again uh, winter time is when it will start to set flower uh, just like what you see here. I mean, this, yeah, this, this guy is highly, highly underrated. Uh, takes a coal. In, in fact, it, it, again, it, it needs the coal. Uh, Etavoyas. I really should just pick these fruits. Um, yeah, but yeah, once it's this size, man, no issues at all. Uh, I mean, everybody, well, I'm assuming everybody knows that, that citrus, this um, grapefruit here, um, they, they actually need, they, they prefer the, the winter. They, it, it makes the fruits sweeter. So that's why I'm, I'm leaving the, the fruits there. But citrus, yeah, it, it, they're really known to be winter trees. But, um, oh, and, you know, speaking of which, low quads. Yeah, this is just like the uh, white sapote. I mean, yeah, this guy flowers uh, in winter, middle, middle of winter. Uh, the thing with the low quad is generally in March or May, that's when the fruits actually are ripen. So it's one of the, the fruits that will, the trees that will uh, ripen the, the earliest. Uh, it looks like it's warmed up a bit. It is now a warm 42 degrees from 41 so slowly climbing up mango and again as you can see i mean no protection at all there's i mean the trees that are in the ground i don't protect just because i have a high level confidence that you know the the living ground that i'm standing on will do its job in ensuring these, these trees uh, make it to winter. Uh, long again. Yeah, I, I have yet to see any signs of damage on this um, black sapote tree. Generally, by now, the, the leaves will be black on the bottom, but uh, not this time. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing practically no impact at all from the coal. Another mango. BQ longan, one of the fastest growing longan varieties. Let's see what else do we've got. <laughs> Ooh, it is cool. So even the lychee here, Kamana lychee. Yeah, I mean lychees along with longans. The, the, the I find that these guys can take the cold without any issues. Uh. Guavas, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised this guy hasn't turned red yet. Well, actually, I, I take that back. When you look at the top, uh, you know, some of the, the top foliage that's exposed to the, the elements on the top, they, they are starting to turn red. Uh, this, I mean, this is expected. It does this every year. Sonam cherry. Oh, hey, <laughs> look at that. I don't think it's good anymore. But yeah, Suriname cherry is another tropical cherry tree that is, it just does phenomenal here. Uh, new growth, of course. Yep. Let's see what else we've got. Rose apple. Rose apples, unlike the wax jambu, although they are in the same family, yeah, this guy definitely can take the cold. So. Uh, I don't have any issues with it going on, uh, during the cold time, um, so I just let it do its thing. Pineapple guava, of course. Yeah, pineapple guava. Um, yeah, uh, this is a cold, uh, hardy plant. Um, 
So here's the carry store fruit that um, was planted, uh, I want to say maybe a year ago in, in this waste bed. Yeah, no, no impact at all from the coal. Oh, you know what? I wanted to cover this really quick. So, <laughs> green sapote. I mean, check it out. Yeah, green sapote is one of the sapotes that uh, is as close to a mame that you could really get from the perspective of taste. Uh, but yeah, no, this guy, the green sapote varieties can handle the coal. Um, even behind us, I mean, where the cassava is going, I mean, it, it's, this is obviously frost damage, but uh, cassava, I mean, this, this is a tropical living uh, tree. Um, but everything else besides that is doing great. Red Etamoya, I'm sorry, uh, Red Israel Etamoya, finally seeing some frost damage. But, I mean, that, that's on old leaves. When you look at the, the, the more newer leaves, they're fine. So th th think of the old leaves as being just like dead skin. I mean, new ones will really come out to uh, take their place. Yeah, I mean, again, it is, it's cold here. Uh, I mean, the trees have not gotten a break. I mean, it, it's been foggy, I guess, for a while now. Taiwanese uh, guava, finally, finally turning uh, red as expected. Uh, you know, it, it really does not help that um, I left, or not left, but I forgot these fruits that are still on the tree. By taking out the fruits, again, you're, you're making sure that the tree now gets the energy towards just battling the coal versus putting more of its energy into, you know, like fruit production. So that, that's one of the things that um, I often do during the fall season, but obviously I, I miss these. Uh, Guma Chema. Yeah, this particular Tropical fruit tree can handle the cold without any issues. The thing with Gumachama is going to be the summertime. Not a fan of a, a direct sun. It, it, it gets, uh, in fact, all these foliage. This is actually all sun damage. This is sunburn. So that's why I've got it back here being shaded by the, um, the uh, Taiwanese guava along with the kaffir lime, which is dropped, well, it's dropped all of its lime which we don't use the lime actually we just use the leaves Whew. cool can I stay out <laughs> four years old not in the not in the native climate this is what you, you what you really can expect compared to uh, its native counterpart which is probably I would say maybe get ten times the size and is fruiting but hey, this is what you get. It's not dead, it's alive. So even the container trees uh, have no issues with the coal. I mean, long ends, there's actually three varieties. Uh, Kahala, BUQ. Uh, the, the thing with BUQ, you, you could tell, is the fact that they are quite tall. Structurally, they, they, these guys just want to go up straight up. And then <laughs> one of the slowest growing Longins, Shui Champu. So, yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, you know what? I keep forgetting these over here. M more citrus. I mean, again, citrus, not an issue with the cold. I, I just leave the fruits there to overwinter. They, they become sweeter. More longins. This, this guy actually is flower. I'm sorry, it is uh, growing. Yeah, so he, he's been in the ground, I want to say, four years. So, yeah, I'm going to, well, you know, might as well cover these guys. So, these three larger trees that I've got in the middle of my yard, Kapulin Cherry, uh, Duhat, as it's called in the Philippines. It is commonly known as a Java Plum, or I'm sorry, or Jamun. And 
the largest tree that I've got so far, which I do not see any damage at all or any impact from the frost, the, the, the Inga tree. Yeah, my goal really is once all these trees get to this maturity, I mean, they're fine. In fact, I have a strong suspicion the reason why all the smaller trees underneath its canopy, underneath its protection, the reason why they're doing so well is, I mean, look at it. I mean, as the frost hits from the top, everything down here is uh, protected. Lychee, uh, carry star fruit, it, it, it's all protected. So, and I mean, the Miley apple, it, this guy gets double the protection from the black sapote and then from the, the main <laughs> inga on the top. Oh man, it's, it's I, I just, if you look at the low quad on the top, I mean, that guy is just loaded with flowers. I mean, right now, in many ways, is like the best time to, um, to kind of attract the bees. I mean, right now, there's not a whole lot of nectars and, and food for the insects, but with tropical fruit trees, uh, I mean, it, it provides a nice bonus to the insects that, that will help out your trees. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you to the front where I, I've got a, a few more examples to show you. All right. I'm telling you, it is no joke. So this is daytime. Imagine nighttime. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> more star fruits. I mean, yeah, star fruits. I, I know I've covered this in previous videos, but yeah, these guys are winter trees. I mean, it it it, it will uh, produce flower and fruit during the uh, winter season. Mix a uh, a great ornament. I mean, like, check it out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, star fruits, even papaya. I'm really just not seeing any impact at all from the, the frost, the coal. Yeah, these guys are, I mean, they're fairly young. Uh, I want to say I got these guys in ground just back in May. Um, they're loaded with fruits and, and flour and, and they're it's it's making it through winter so guava this is really a, a very mature established uh ruby supreme guava but yeah no issues more long ends although this is a uh, kahala <laughs> it thinks it's a view <laughs> I mean, look at the, the vertical growth. Yeah, this guy's like a kahala. Red Malaysian, of course. Oh, and um, Chiao Moya uh, right behind him. I, the, the thing with Chiao Moya is it's very hard to straighten out. It, it's just, it just wants to grow like a bush. Yep, more gravas. Mango, uh, heat mango, see the top growth? That's what I'm trying to prevent, but it's nature. I mean, you, you can only do so much to try to stop it from growing. Yeah, that's what I mean by uh, you don't really want it to grow because this is what's going to happen when, when it grows during winter time is uh, the damage to the new growth. But hey, it's life. You can't really pause it. It's going to do what it wants to do. More papaya. Yep. And uh, sunrise papaya. So I know I've mentioned this in the past. Uh, this guy actually was beaten up by the, the frost from last year. And I, I at the time, I predicted uh, that it's going to become a kind of an octopus of a papaya with all the different branches coming out. And yeah, this is one of the... <laughs> The thing that's going to happen if it uh, if it's gets struck down by the frost is the new growth is is going to essentially expand into its own tr trunk and each trunk will have its own set of fruit. Uh, even the um, yeah, there's a, a Corriente mango back here. 
got to straighten him out uh next to um the the rescue um store foot there of course yep even the in guy here i mean look at it this is there's no protection at all in, in this section and and they're fine again <laughs> The benefit that we have is just the lack of wind. It, we're just not a windy city. Central Valley, I mean, we're, we're surrounded by hills and mountains, which in, in many ways protects us from the, the wind, windy elements. But th that's also where the fog and, and the cold settles down is in the valley. So I guess you can't win everything. I'm really surprised that this, uh, Tamron is <laughs> making it. I, I mean, in previous years, it, it was completely defoliated by now. <sighs> yeah. Strawberry, um, yeah, strawberry guava. What is it going to do in the middle of winter? It's going to flower. Boy, I mean, even the plumeria this year is doing great. I mean, the old leaves, of course, have dropped, but it's still fully uh, lived. <sighs> yeah, but anyhow, yeah, I just wanted to kind of give you a tour. I mean, it, it's not do gloom, doom and gloom for us. Uh, I mean, almost all the trees that, that are tropical fruit trees, uh, there are some extremes, but most tropical fruit trees, uh, once they are established and in the ground, have no issues at all with, uh, against our you know, frosty elements. And uh, again, we're, granted, we're, we're halfway there, but you know, from my experience, uh, it, it's actually pretty rare that I actually lose a tree to the frost. I mean, out of the 170 trees or so, uh, I, I might lose one or two. I mean, that's a put in my opinion, that's a pretty good odds. Uh, and Again, it, it, it does really, I, I, I hate to keep emphasizing on this, but it, it really does get better after each year. After several winters, the trees are not going to have any issues. Uh, yeah, they, the, the, the young foliage might suffer some damage, but that's as soon as the, the weather warms up, new leaves are going to come out to uh, take their place. I mean... I am really expecting like all these leaves on the uh, red lady papayas here to be all burnt uh, by the time winter is over. However, new growth is going to come out just to take its place. So, yeah. So that, that's it. That, that's that's uh, growing tropical fruit trees for you. All right. Have a good afternoon.